everyone. This is Yehuda Holtzman, and I am uh, glad to host today Moshe Lipsker. Hi. Moshe and I had the opportunity to work together for several years in uh, Mobilogy. Just a short background, Moshe, I'll start and please add as you feel right. So Moshe, you spent 14 years as a senior director of R&D with Polycon. Yeah. You managed uh, multidiscipline development in uh, multiple countries. Then you joined me with uh, Mobilogy, where you served as VP R&D. Recently, actually almost a year ago, you joined Imperva is VP R&D, one of the uh, leading global cybersecurity companies. Thank you. And the uh, reason for uh, this podcast, actually, we met a few weeks ago and we discussed some of the challenges that we had shifting from one type of product, on-premise installation, to multi-tenant, SaaS product, And we found ourselves that this is the second time we are having those challenges, this time in different companies. You are uh, in Imperva, and I'm in a similar position, uh, CEO of uh, a new company. And the challenges are similar and still very tough. And we thought, you know, this would be a great opportunity to share the experience with the audience since we are hearing that many companies are going through this challenge these days and hopefully they can benefit from the information we're planning to share with them. So wanted actually to get your view on, first of all, high level. What are the main challenges you see in such a shift? And then we should go probably deeper into each of them. Okay, first of all, thank you for the invitation. Referring to the challenge from on-premise development and delivery to a SaaS delivery, there are several issues that should be addressed. The first challenge is an operational challenge, and we will uh, drill down to uh, what this means in a minute. The second challenge I see is the technology challenge, technology architecture, and the entire technology stack challenge. The third challenge I see is a culture, skill set, mindset challenge where you need to shift an organization from an on-prem organization to a SaaS organization. And the last one is actually an organizational challenge that once you're moving from on-prem to a SaaS company and doing both or having a one that can actually trade off the other, you, you need to change the organization and do the right things in order to deliver this challenge. Let me just uh, jump here. Since I know that the organization challenge was such a serious thing, I think we should have a separate session on that. Yes. And we should probably discuss the first three, which can by themselves, they were a huge challenge. And maybe let's start with the operational challenge that you mentioned. So we need to understand the background here, on-prem development versus SaaS. So the organizations in the entire world over the last years are moving from CapEx or capital expense to operational expense, closing on-premise data centers and moving to the cloud. This is a trend that started with Amazon, continuing with Microsoft Azure and Google. But uh, this uh, movement from uh, data centers on-prem to the cloud is a big, big uh, trend and movement, and eventually it derives a change in the way we uh, operate and act. The reason for this change is actually referring to operational uh, efficiency. IT resources keeping uh, huge data centers in companies with a big capital expense is actually unaffordable, and the movement to the cloud will reduce this CapEx cost and will uh, actually improve the efficiency of companies. Eventually, it will improve efficiency and profitability of companies because the wide expense of infrastructure on each on-premise organization is out of scope. So it's showstopper and the, and the world is changing this. So basically, what you're saying is let's stop investing in infrastructure regarding servers and applications to support it and people to maintain it and outsource it. And the 
efficiency is also gained by the fact that when we outsource it, we pay for what we use compared to a situation where we can have data centers that first year or two, we're going to consume a very small part of it. Absolutely. So it's actually on-demand service versus perpetual or subscription versus perpetual, and you use only what you consume. Right. And you don't pay for something that is not consumable. And it's important to add that the movement to the cloud is actually delivering financial challenges as well. Moving from perpetual to subscription licenses. Actually, a great point you're mentioning. We have a dedicated podcast on the difference between perpetual license and subscription license and how it impacts the organization financials. And obviously, everyone is welcome to listen to this important podcast. Okay, so this is a part of the, the first challenge, which is the, the operational. We talked about the background, the movements to the cloud, closing data centers and IT and CapEx and making the budget efficient. The other item that is part of the operational challenge is the delivery cadence. In the on-prem deployment, the cadence, we're talking about monthly, quarterly, or yearly. Where in the SaaS, we're talking about uh, our daily, weekly basis. So a totally different delivery cadence. We call it a continuous deployment in the SaaS. And it's actually enabling the vendor to deliver fixes and features and to enrich his uh, SaaS offering on a daily basis. The on-prem was a totally different scenario. And if you have a bug showstopper, you need to fix it and deploy in all these on-prems that you're deployed. This change is actually changing the cadence and uh, go-to-market strategy of the entire industry. I mean, this is a great point, and I'd like to raise your question. So obviously, when we talk about small businesses, this makes a lot of sense. How do you deal with a challenge when the customer is tier one that is expecting to have the option to receive the new changes, look at them, test them, and then approve them? How do we work with them? Yeah, so it's a good question. The SaaS offerings are actually not one single solution because... You have different segments, different market. You have the SMB, the medium, the tier ones, which are the big ones. Actually, the way to address this challenge, because they have their own cadence, first of all, you need to be very transparent with all your uh, delivery, starting from the architecture, making sure that they know that you're multi-tenant, you don't mix uh, their data with others. This is the, the first uh, prerequisite, which is fundamental to the entire process. Once you gain their uh, trust, then uh, how do they approve uploading to the cloud? You can't deliver a SaaS offering to a public cloud without their approval. So the way to mitigate this is to use staging environments and to get their approval on the staging. And then before you upload to the production, you're doing it only after they approve it. There are other uh, options like a private cloud. So you have your public SaaS offering and you can replicate this in a private cloud on the on-premise uh, of that tier one. This is uh, the worst case scenario from the vendor perspective because it's a big operational uh, challenge for the SaaS vendor, but this is doable as well. So you can deliver the SaaS for t- two, tier one in a public cloud using staging environments and these methods, or you can actually move totally to the way you actually deliver their isolated private cloud and this is pending their approval. I want to go one level deeper. So in a situation where let's say we have a staging for a tier one customer, it means that everyone else, all other customers are updated to uh, a certain version and still this customer sees the uh, previous version? It's related to the type of the software you're delivering. There is an option to open via feature flags several customers to see one feature set, another customer to see another feature set. You can actually have your back office admin configure everything. So everything is doable. This is another option. It's a good direction to go where you're not going all the way to the private cloud. You you still deliver in the public cloud, but different customers sees 
different feature sets. Okay, interesting. So this, this is another option. The variant of the options is huge, and everything is applicable and, and optionable. I mean, we're talking about cloud compared to on-premise. And my guess is that there are type of customers that will not make this change. And wanted to get your perspective. What are the type of customers that we will still have to maintain the on-premise installation? So it's related to the type of the customer and the segment. So, for example, governments or security, big financial institutes, healthcare, huge enterprises or governments or providers, they're not moving uh, so fast to the cloud. They're not the early adopters. The trend or the process is slower, but eventually they will reach the cloud. Five to 10 years from now, everything will be on the cloud. It's because of the budget and the CAPEX and the operational efficiency that we talked uh, in the previous topic. So I know the next item is on the technology part and maybe a good transition is my question whether they have a right claim, those that are not yet willing to make full move to the cloud, that in terms of security, having something on premise is much more secured compared to having something on the cloud. So it's a valid point. In the on-premise environment, the customer controls the environment. In the SaaS or the cloud environment, the vendor is controlling the environment and the customer doesn't have any control. And actually, from the security perspective, he should assume that the level of security will be given by the cloud provider or the Mm -hmm. vendor itself that is giving him the SaaS. So it's a big decision that they need to do and the confidence level that they need to have in the cloud provider and in the SaaS provider is big. This is the reason SaaS companies should work on the transparency and the compliance of all the concerns these customers are raising. And everything should be open. And InfoSec and DevOps and all these trends should be open communication, open conversation with the customers. And only after the customers will be convinced that this uh, SaaS vendor and this cloud vendor is secured enough, they will move forward and start uh, deploying to the cloud. So as vendors, we need to uh, to gain the confidence of the customers. So I think that brings us to the next topic, right? Technology challenge. Once you're uh, delivering off-the-shelf software where you control the software and you have all these um, agreements with customers, you control your IP. The IP is a software and and you control it and you know where it is. It's it's on-prem and you have these agreements with the customers. But once you're moving to the cloud, then you're losing control as a vendor and you can actually have a breach of IP, which can be a a disaster for a company. Right. And this was definitely one of our main challenges. We had some very unique IP, especially to do with testing uh, cell phones or duplicating data of cell phones. And we spend a lot of time trying to figure out how we're going to uh, secure our IP. Yeah, a very big uh, challenge. It's not easy. And, and if you don't uh, address this accurately or the right way, you can uh, destroy a company because the IP can be stolen. So the way we address this challenge was by uh, decoupling the software that we had and analyzing what's important and what's not important. Not everything is IP. For example, UI, UX is not IP. In our offering, it was not the IP. The business logic, it was not the IP, but we uh, drilled down and we saw that the the way we um, crack phones or uh, mobile phones and penetrate protocols, this was our main IP. And we actually divided and decoupled to black boxes where we actually have the SaaS offering and then you can um, download ad hoc a black box which will do the atomic uh, function, will finish the function of penetrating a phone and doing diagnostics or other functionality that we did and then uh, we eliminate and delete the footprint of that black box. So we we had the SaaS offering with these black box that are downloaded to the phones ad hoc, but uh, we controlled these downloads by uh, eliminating the um, footprint of the black box. So another significant challenge was, all right, so now we 
have on-prem installation for one customer and now we're talking about hundreds of customers sharing the same infrastructure how are we going to manage the data load and actually the very dynamic data consumption this is a, a great uh, question when you have an on-premise software you have performance issue and it's it's related to the solution that you're providing but you Eventually, it, you have performance issue and maybe you have a scale issue. But when you're moving to the cloud, which you have a single point of function, which is serving so many customers, you're talking about scalability issues, robustness and scalability. This is the main technology challenge that we saw in the cloud. And we're talking about tons of Terra and petabytes that are moving from here to there. And it's uh, all the customer in parallel at once, and you see the, these peaks in the logs and the scalability challenge technology wise in SAS uh, solutions is huge. And if someone wants to deliver move from on-prem to the cloud uh, and port his functionality or replicate, he needs to um, architect his uh, solution in terms of uh, robustness and scalability, and it should be in from day one. Day one, he needs to address all the scalability issues in order to be robust. And we're talking about SaaS offering, which is five nines. You don't have any chance for um, downtime. And it's related to um, the way you mitigate issues and knock and 24-7 uh, DevOps and uh, pager duty. It's a huge change of a mindset where you need to develop your software at the scale and to uh, support it accordingly. You mentioned that we need to architect the uh, solution. Can you elaborate more on the difference between the architect when we use a multi-tenant cloud-based solution versus on-premise? Yes, we started with monolithics, meaning developing a big chunk of uh, software, which when you try to uh, develop on top of that or fix in that monolithic, you actually change the entire um, software. And when you uh, move to the cloud, you should change the architecture. So I talked about the scalability and the precondition for scalability is the right architecture. So part of this is microservices. Microservices and Dockers are today the trends of uh, SaaS development, moving from monolithics, big monolithics, to small uh, uh, microservices. Microservices are actually a small atomic piece of software which is doing the relevant functionality and is orchestrated by uh, Dockers and um, lots of layers of piece of software that are running, doing the function and going down this way. The uh, microservice slash docker's approach enables the delivery cadence we talked about previously because once you're fixing or developing a new functionality, you don't need to uh, recompile and rebuild and redeploy the entire solution. You can actually go to the relevant uh, microservice, fix only that microservice, automate it with tests, and then upload it to the production. So the architecture, which is microservice docker's versus monolithics, It's actually enabling you to change the cadence, enabling you to actually address the scalability in parallel. So if I have today a product, a monolithic product, and I'm looking to convert it into a new architecture that includes microservices, can I do it gradually? Can I take the monolithic, maybe shut down a couple of functions and have them as a starting point as microservice? So that the system is semi monolithic semi microservice, and then progress and continue to convert the leftover from monolithic to microservice, or I have to do it from zero it's a good question actually, this question or this trade off between turning from scratch or migration paths from on prem to cloud is a discussion that I assume Any company that is trying to move from on-prem to SaaS is having this, these discussions. I can say that there are case studies in companies that try to move monolithics to the cloud from on-prem and they failed because, because of the lack of scalability and because of the lack of architecture. But if there is a good migration path and a good ar- architecture that is actually supporting the movement to eventually move full cloud meaning full scale full uh, microservices 
and eventually no, no monolithics and you're decomposing the monolithics and trying to make them a microservice, it may work. So it's very related to the specific piece of software that you're delivering. And it's the way to, uh, to address this is to drill down in detail to the architecture of the monolithics and say, see what can be reusable and what can't. There are pieces of um, historical software that can't be reusable no matter what. For example, in the sense, the streaming of data is uh, moving so fast versus batch pulling of files, which we do in, uh, in on-prem, for example, in several software development. So you can't take a batch uh, solution and change it to a streaming solution. You need to restructure the entire software to support streaming. So this is a, an example when you can't take the on-prem to the cloud. I remember one of our challenges was we basically had a hardware core product with an application layer on top of that. Yeah. And our challenge was how we take this hardware-based platform and convert it into a full software solution. One of the challenges, the technology challenges was we actually required a lot of information regarding a cell phone before we could connect it to the system. And now we were trying to create a solution that we don't need to have the physical phone in order to obtain all the required data. Yes, to give a background, the variant, the, the solution that we developed uh, referring to a penetration to cell phones or smartphones, we needed to deliver our solutions and test them on the big variant or the big matrix of operating systems in these uh, smartphones. So you have all these uh, models on all these smartphones, you have all these operating systems and flavors, and eventually you need lots of phones to... Uh, many thousands. Many thousands to uh, reside in your um, warehouse and then you need to uh, test them, the software, against these phones. So the challenge here was, how do you change the game here and reduce the cost of this warehouse? It's the same cost reduction that we talked about moving to clouds, closing data centers. So here is closing maybe a warehouse. And how you test uh, this in a SaaS environment where you have a continuous deployment, you need to uh, change on daily basis, hourly basis, and you don't want to do all these um, testing on this uh, warehouse. So the, um, the way we uh, mitigated this was by um, two uh, directions. The first one was we had this big uh, warehouse to uh, get all the functionality of the phone. We changed this from manual and hardware to um, a software automatic uh, crawler, which is crawling the internet and gathering all the information from the internet and actually giving automatically all the functionality of the specific phones and then you don't need it manually. So just to clarify, so instead of getting the phone and analyzing it, basically crawl the internet and, do, and find the right files so that we can use them. Yeah, you don't need to analyze the phone before you test it. You can analyze the phone automatically by a software that is actually crawling and fetching all the information. This was the first direction. The second direction was the testing itself, which we talked about the big variant, the big matrix, all these flavors, all these operating systems, all these models. So we actually crowd tested the entire world and we eliminated the need of the warehouse by actually asking people from the world, there are services like that, outsource and crowd testing, which gives you the option to test your um, software against different phones from different countries, different regions, and then your um, testing environment is less expensive and more qualified. That was a real game changer in our um, testing capabilities. So we talked about the operation challenges, we discussed in high level the technology challenges, and you mentioned that there is also a change in requirement from the development team and also a change of set of mind. Can you clarify on those? This is a very important statement because moving to the cloud is not only about architecture and software and technology gaps that you mitigate. 
It's all about state of mind and attitude and culture and the way you deliver. So we're talking about a culture issue, on-prem versus cloud, and we're talking about skill set issue, which is on-prem versus cloud. In the skill set arena, the historical software on-prem solutions were more C, C++ related to the solution. It can be Java, but can be monolithic, different skill sets. When you move to the cloud, it's a totally different technology stack. We're talking about full-stack developers, which can move very smoothly between the layers of the software vertically and can move horizontally between the microservices and deliver solutions end-to-end because we're talking about agility and time to value. So we need people in the SaaS solutions and SaaS vendors, need people that are moving fast, very agile, and have the skill set of a broad system view and a full stack view. In the on-prem, we need these skill set, but uh, less. So just a question on that. I mean, we had many tens of uh, development engineers, and obviously our goal is always to maintain the current team. How did we manage this change in requirement? So um, first of all, you need to have a heat map or map the people that um, can move from the on-prem culture mindset slash skill set to the cloud. This is the first thing. There are people that are very on-prem oriented and very monolithic oriented and very historical oriented that will remain on the on-prem and it's okay and it's good because we need to continue to develop the on-prem solutions. These developments, maintenance and feature requests on the on-prems will be the cash cow, which eventually will pay the salaries of the SaaS organization. So basically what you're saying, even let's say a medium type company decided to make this move, there actually will be required to support two products for several years. Yes. And therefore the challenge of having two type of developments. Yes. This is a very big challenge. You're delivering cash cow, but you want to have a growth engine, which is the SaaS. It's okay. This is the trend. You need to move to the cloud, but you can't neglect the existing cash cow. You need to continue to invest. Your customers, which are on-prem customers, currently invested heavily in your on-prem solution. You can't cannibalize your existing on-prem solution. You need to develop your growth engine, which is the SaaS, but to maintain the, the on-prem. We're talking about culture, and we talked about cadence, and pager duty, and 24-7, and five lines, and you, you're talking about technical skills. You need to uh, create an atmosphere when people are not starting to develop on the cloud, but they need to have all the background. And you can't always recruit people uh, from the outside. You need uh, people that have the skill set on the specific uh, functionality that they delivered on the on-prem and they want to replicate on the cloud. So you need to create an atmosphere where you have meetup, academy, culture, uh, different go-to uh, events, and have a totally change of the mindset in order to take the R&D organization to that direction. So the last topic that we mentioned we'll have a dedicated podcast on was the organization change. And maybe, Moshe, you can just give high-level view of yeah. what to come later on. Okay, so the last challenge was the organizational change. So in glance... I can say that after we got over all the challenges and we talked about all these architecture technology issues or the mindset and culture and skill set, eventually the big challenge, and we mentioned it uh, briefly, uh, was to develop in parallel the on-prem solutions. And I'm talking about solutions. We had several solutions on-prem and to develop the new platforms. And I'm talking about multiple platforms, not only a SaaS, but a mobile platform as well. So we had... The challenge was to develop uh, four verticals in parallel, two on-prem, two SaaS. And the way to uh, address this big challenge was to uh, have a big uh, organizational change. And this is the main topic for the next uh, podcast, I assume. All right. So the way you describe it, I'm sure we're going to have everyone waiting for, uh, for the next podcast. So Moshe, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. We'll talk in the next podcast. Mm -hmm.